Hallelujah. It is simply good to be in the house of the Lord. Once again, amen. amen. Come with me to the Old Testament. To the book of Numbers. Chapter number 27. Beginning with the first verse. Numbers 27. The daughters of Zelophehad showed up. Their father was the son of Hefer, son of Gilead, son of Machir, son of Manasseh, belonging to the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. The daughters were Mala, Noah, Gadla, Milcah, and Terza. They came to the entrance of the tent of meeting. They stood before Moses and Eleazar, the priest, and before the leaders and the congregation and said, Our father died in the wilderness. He wasn't a part of Korah's rebellion against God. He died for his own sins, and he left no sons. But why should our father's name die out from his clan just because he had no sons? So give us an inheritance among our father's relatives. Moses brought their case to God. God ruled. Zelophehad's daughters were right. Give them land as an inheritance among their father's relatives. Give them their father's inheritance. Then tell the people of Israel, if a man dies and leaves no son, Give his inheritance to his daughter. If he has no daughter, give it to his brothers. If he has no brothers, give it to his father's brothers. If his father had no brothers, give it to the nearest relative so that the inheritance stays in the family. This is the standard procedure for the people of Israel as commanded by God through Moses. The word of the Lord is blessed. For a few moments on today, I want to talk to you from the subject, fix it the right way. Fix it the right way. The foundation of any structure is where it all begins. If you are having a new structure built, the foundation needs to be strong and secure. If you are undertaking a repair or remodeling project, it requires work that must be done by a professional. A major structural problem is every homeowner's nightmare. But if left unattended, the value of your home may decrease over time. See, we must understand in the church, a foundation 
needs to be strong and secure. And when we have a broken foundation in the church, it requires the touch of the master. Foundational problems left unattended in the church of God can cause problems and get worse and worse over time. See, there's an urgency, Reverend Slater, in fixing foundations in our relationships. There's an urgency in fixing a broken foundation in our homes. There is an urgency in fixing broken foundations in our communities. And there's an urgency in fixing broken foundations in our church. My brothers and my sisters, if I can be so bold, if we allow God by faith and through our diligence to fix foundational problems, there will be a revival in our community, a revival in our homes, and a revival in our churches. Yes. Amen. The only way to fix a broken foundation is to rely on the foundation fixer. The foundation fixer, Deacon Woods, the Bible says he's Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Jesus Christ, the firstborn of the dead. Jesus Christ, the hope of our salvation. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. Jesus Christ, who is the horn of salvation. Jesus Christ, who is the righteous branch. He's the stone that the builders rejected. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords, and he is our great high priest. We must allow Jesus Christ to fix our foundational issues. Yes. It's just like all state. You're in your hands when you find yourself in Jesus' hands. Yes. My Lord, my Lord. How, however, in order for this to occur, we have to have a desire that the foundation be fixed. Yeah. It has to be Lord, Lord. Lamont something that we want. It has to be something that we desire and we must want change around us. And when we want change around us, we want it done the right way. We all have feelings about how things should be. And many times we want folk to understand what we feel the need is. We want folk to internalize what we want. We want people to want and accept the things that we want. And we want folks to make the changes that we feel need to be made based on our interpretation of events and our interpretation of scripture. Yeah. But I want you to understand just because we think something is acceptable doesn't make it right. Just because we think something is acceptable does not make it word based just because we think something is acceptable does not make it godly nor is it always the will of God see we have to understand when we read the pages of scripture that God never changes his word never changes and God cannot be manipulated yeah, Hebrews 13 verse 8 lets us know Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forevermore right. 
Numbers 23, 19 states, let us know that God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? See in our text, the five daughters of the loaf of hand are a great example, example of how to get the right results in a godly way. See, if the Israelites were about to possess the promised land, guidelines had been established for allocating the land among the various tribes. But the law said, and what my Bible reads is that only the men could inherit the land. These five women said, wait a minute, bro. This ain't right. If they were denied the opportunity by the law to receive the inheritance left by their father. So what they did, they challenged the law by taking their case to Moses. And they said, our father died in the wilderness. He had no sons. Give us possession among our father's brothers. Now see, we have to understand this. Since it was God that gave the law, God is the only one who can change the law. Somebody needs to understand that on today. That even though we might not want to abide by the rules that God has laid in place, but we cannot change God's rule no matter how we feel about what he has laid out. Since it was God who gave the law, I'm going to say it one more time, only God can change it. So Moses took that case before the Lord. Let me park there for a second. Many times before we speak, we need to take our case before the Lord. And we need to wait and hear what the Lord has to say. And he said, these women are right. You shall cause the inheritance to pass to them. See, these brave women took matters into their own hands. But beloved, they did it the right way. If we have family issues, we have to handle them the right way. If we have issues on our job, we must handle them the right way. If we have problems with our friends, we must handle them the right way. If we have problems in our churches, we handle them the right way by taking them to the Lord in prayer. So you have to look at what these women were up against. They had no men in their lives to speak up on their behalf. No husbands, no brothers, no sons, but the Bible does tell us that they had some uncles. Yes. And the uncles were going to speak up. <laughs> because they were ready to get paid. <laughs> but see, we have to understand what something is unfair. When something is unjust, God may be calling you to challenge and to change it. But before you challenge 
and try to change it, you have to make sure your heart has the right posture. You have to make sure that you have the proper information. You have to make sure the information is in the proper order and accurate. And once you have it all nice and neat, take it to the Lord and talk about it. We also understand that all things don't come to those who wait. But they come to those who are willing to go and get them. We have to be a church. Stop waiting on folks to show up here. But we need to take the church to the people. We can't wait for them to come here. We have to go where the need is that we need to begin to meet the need in our community and in our nation. You understand the man may close the door. But when you turn to God, he can open that door for you. But we must remember that we have to do things the right way. So what is the methodology? We should follow to assure that we stand and build on a foundation that is secure. Number one, be willing to use godly principles. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. Complaining doesn't change anything. Being dishonest doesn't change anything. Ungodly practices don't change anything. Doing things contrary to the word and the will of God will do more damage than good. And it just makes things worse and it makes people more miserable. See the text? With millions of people entering the promised land, other, other women were in the same predicament. But nothing changed until these women became proactive and re refused to accept the status quo. My brothers and my sisters, we have to start being proactive and not reactive. They took courage. Going before Moses is like going before the Supreme Court. Solutions are found when you decide to face your problems head on and do something constructive about them. God's people are called to be productive. Refuse to accept just anything. Be strong and be courageous. And we take it to the Lord in prayer. No matter what we do, strive to be productive. In danger seen unseen, strive to be productive. If you have to stand all alone, stand and be productive. Point number one, be willing to use godly principles to do something about the issues. Point number two, be clear about what is required. What, is, what, what do you want to happen? Or what do you want to stop happening? Be clear about what is required. See, when you don't know where you're going, you may think any road will get you there. But for success, you must have a clear goal in mind. And you must have the road map. And the road map is the word 
of God. See, these women, they believed that they were entitled to the same blessings the male members of their family received. And they refused to settle for less. My brothers and my sisters, in this walk or today, are you settling for less than you deserve? Stop settling for less because you have to remember, no matter where you go, you are a child of the true and living God. Remember your inheritance. As a result, God gave them their reward. And if he'll do it for them, guess what? He will do it for you. But let us not grow weary in doing good. Let us not grow weary in living right. Let us not grow weary in loving right. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Point number one, be willing to use godly principles. Point number two, be clear about what is required. But last but not least, and this may be the most important one, refuse to be discouraged. Refuse to be discouraged by the opinions of others. Refuse to be discouraged by the policies folk put in place. Refuse to be discouraged by the traditions of man. See, under the Mosaic law, women weren't even numbered as part of the congregation. Can you imagine what our church would look like? If we still live by that practice today, many times in scripture, God altered the norm in response to bold faith. And having bold faith, my brothers and my sisters, has changed the destiny of many individuals. And we have to believe that what God has done for you, he will do for me. If God delivered you, he will deliver me. If God has healed your sickness, he will deliver me. But we must be willing to use godly principles. That means we are students and children of the word of God. And we are clear about what is required. And we refuse to be discouraged. We do this by placing our hope not in the church, not in people, but in Jesus Christ. The songwriter said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. Oh, of the ground is sinking sand. See, when my foundation is unsure, I rest in his grace. When trouble tries to take me down, I rest in his grace. When I feel like I'm all alone, I rest in his grace in the midst of hard times. See, I rest in his grace in the midst of adversity. I rest in his grace in the midst of uncertain situations. I rest in his grace when trouble tries to surround me. I rest in 
in his grace. But when God does what he does, I rejoice in his grace when he heals my broken heart. I rejoice in his grace when he heals all my wounds. I rejoice in his grace when he changes my circumstance. I rejoice in his grace when he rescues me from the enemy. I rejoice in his grace when he restores my weary soul. I rejoice in his grace. The songwriter said, the road is rough, the going gets tough, and the hills are hard to climb. See, I started out a long time ago. There is no doubt in my mind. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But I decided. I decided. I decided. I decided to make Jesus my choice. No one can take my choice with Jesus. In my choice. No one can from my peace with Jesus. In my choice. No one can discourage me with Jesus. In my choice. No one can break me down with Jesus. In my choice. The songwriter says, My faith looks up to thee, thou lamb of Calvary. Savior, divine. Be my Savior, divine. Be the foundation will be restored without a faith. Is it God? Worship who can continue to be birthed because our faith is in God. The enemy can't take hope down because our faith is in God. The enemy can't change the outcome. Our faith is in God. We won't be discouraged. We won't be disconnected. We won't be direct. We won't be discouraged. And our Faith is in God because great is thy faith. Morning by morning, who mercies I see all that I have needed. Thy hand has provided. Great is thy faith. Be on your knees. But see, the enemy, think of 
people don't want you to be on your knees. The enemy doesn't want you to study your word. The enemy doesn't want you in the presence of God. So don't be discouraged. Because God, he before you. Hope Missionary Baptist Church, who can be against you? Let's give God a praise on today. We're going to fix it the right way.